now the point told by parashar parashar tells us turyamshe bhagya chintanam turyamsh is what is called by the word turyamsh d4 is being referred to turyamsh means the turiya amsha turiya i have explained you and i have also explained you my research talking to the word going to the words of parasha turyamshe bhagya chintanam means the luck the bhagya the fortune needs to be seen through d4 now there are three quick 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 principles that i want to teach you right now before we proceed to the next tips culture first thing first d4 is mapped to the four kendras of the world right what does kendra gives you kendra gives you directional strength in my teaching if i have to say na shubham alok method the directional strength holds a lot of importance right as you know mercury jupiter gets the directional strength in the ascendant right mars and sun gets the directional strength in the 10th house saturn gets the directional strength in the 7th house and moon and venus gets the directional strength in the 4th house right now bhagya fortune you should understand the point fortune is indicated by the nine jewels right that's the normal luck and fortune what does the normal luck and fortune mean as soon as you complete your education you find a job that's fortunate when you are wanting to get an education but somehow you know some financial difficulties are there and someone comes and helps you that's a fortune right when you have a good spouse that's a fortune when you have a good family that's fortune and when you have a bad family that's misfortune even while after completing the education you are unable to find the job that's misfortune right so this is fortune and this is misfortune and this needs to be seen from d4 so you understand a very particular point planet between 0 degree to 7 and a half degree will be going to the first p4 that will be the ascent right 15 degree to 22 degree 30 minutes will be going to the third d4 that will go to the seventh house right and so on and so forth so what you do you take any house lord and house lord you have to take from the d1 chart now if that particular house lord is getting the directional strength as per d4 i will explain it to you is getting the directional strength as per d4 you are fortunate in the matters related to that house if that planet is losing directional strength as per d4 you are being unfortunate with respect to that house and if it is getting neither fortune nor misfortune then okay then you do the work and you get the result according to the work now understand this point d4 indicates fortune and d4 maps to the four kendras of the horoscope the kendras gives you directional strength which actually gives you the blessings of vishnu so basically indicating the house lord which is getting the directional strength as per d4 is getting the support of vishnu making you fortunate and the planet who is losing the directional strength is the planet 
which is making you unfortunate in the matters of the houses which he owns, right? That is the basic concept. So the basic point is first D4 falls between zero degree to seven and a half degree. When Mercury and Jupiter are situated between zero degree to seven and a half degree, they make you fortunate in the things signified by them, in the houses ruled by them, and the rulership of houses should be taken based on D1. When Saturn is situated between zero to seven and a half degree, it makes you unfortunate in his matters, unfortunate in the matters of servants and unfortunate in the matters of profession, etc. And also makes you unfortunate in the matter of the houses where he is situated. In. Between seven degree, 30 minutes to 15 degrees, moon and Venus between seven and a half degrees to 15 degrees makes you fortunate in the houses they own. And sun and Mars between seven and a half degrees to 15 degrees makes you unfortunate in the houses they own. Between 15 degree to 22 degree, 30 minutes, Saturn makes you fortunate with respect to the houses he owns. And Jupiter and Mercury makes you unfortunate with respect to the houses they own. As, and between 22 and a half degrees up to the 30 degrees up to the end of sign, Sun and Mars between 22 degree, 30 minutes to 30 degrees makes you fortunate in the matters of the houses they own. And Moon and Venus between 22 and a half degree to 30 degrees makes you unfortunate in the matters of the houses that they own. Right? So this was just a correction between the degrees of Sun, Mars and Venus, Mercury. Oh, sorry, Venus, Mercury. So let's take an example. That example will make you understand it very clearly. Now in this particular horoscope, Sun is situated in the seventh D4. Right. D4 is calculated from that particular Rashi. The first D4 is in the same sign. Second D4 is in the fourth sign. Third D4 is in the seventh sign. And the tenth D4 is in the, sorry, fourth D4 goes to the tenth sign. So sun is seventh from the Rashi. He is into nothing specific for sun. Mercury also goes into the seventh house from his position. Seventh uh, in D4 goes to the seventh Rashi, nothing specific. Regarding Saturn, Saturn goes to the third D4, which falls in the seventh Rashi from Saturn. This actually puts Saturn into that fortunate degree that is between 15 degree to 22 degree, 30 minutes. Saturn is gaining the directional strength as looking from the Rashi of D1 to the Rashi of D4. Saturn is going into the seventh Rashi. Hence, in the matters of Saturn, that means in the matters of the fifth house and in the matters of the sixth house, this person will be fortunate. Talking of Venus, Venus is in Libra Rashi and Venus goes to Aries in D4. This is nothing specific. Jupiter is into Sagittarius Rashi and goes into Pisces D4, nothing specific. Mercury is into Sagittarius Rashi. Sorry, Mars is into Sagittarius Rashi and Mars goes to Pisces D4. Now from Sagittarius to Pisces, Pisces is the fourth house from Sagittarius, which is actually a house where Mars will lose the directional strength. And hence Mars is losing the directional strength. And this indicates that in the matters of Mars, in the matters related to the third house, and in the matters related to the eighth house, misfortune will be there. Person will be unfortunate in the matter of these houses. Now coming to moon, moon is into Pisces Rashi and moon goes to Gemini D4. From Pisces, Gemini is the fourth sign. Moon gets a directional strength in the fourth house. Hence in the matters of moon, which is the 11th lord, in the matters of the 11th house, this person have to be fortunate. Right? So this particular way, you have to understand it. Simply put, take the Rashi of D1, 
take the rashi of d4 and calculate from the rashi of d1 to the rashi of d4 if the planet is gaining the directional strength or losing the directional strength based on the factor that mercury and jupiter gets directional strength in the same house first house sun and mars gets the directional strength in the 10th house saturn in the 7th house and moon and venus into the 4th house keeping this particular thing in mind fortune related to each and every house can be seen regarding which regarding matters of which house the person is fortunate and regarding matters of which house the person is unfortunate but before doing that particular analysis analysis there is something more important but first of all you tell me this thing is clear right the error is now out of your mind i am very sorry it was my mistake i was calculating it into a reverse order i must have referred to the table somehow i do this stunt of not referring to tables this sometimes become very <laughs> problematic it seems however the most important thing that you should understand turiyamshya bhagya chintanam is what parashar tells you that from d4 luck is to be seen and you know ninth house indicate luck the first thing that you have to check is to check the ninth lord into the d4 chart and this is a normal checking you have to do take that ninth lord of the d1 chart and check the rashi occupied by the same in the navamsha in the d4 in the chaturthamsha now if this planet goes to an exaltation rashi and own rashi this person is fortunate if it goes to debilitation rashi the person is still fortunate but fortune comes later part in life in the later parts of life and if this ninth lord goes to inimical rashi or a friendly rashi normal rashi rather then fortune helps the per fortune is not much fortune is not there i will not use the word unfortunate but somehow the fortune is not supporting much in this particular horoscope ninth lord is venus and this venus is going into aries this aries is not a very good rashi for venus as such it is at max an inimical rashi and because ninth lord is into one such situation it can be said that this person will not be much fortunate first secondly the lagna lord and the 10th lord are the two linchpin of the horoscope two most important things related to the horoscope the same analysis should be done for the lagna lord and 10th lord as well if the lagna lord is good in d4 even if the luck does not support with the help of dedication one can succeed in life if the 10th lord is good in d4 then even if the luck or dedication is not supporting then still with the help of family and with the help of things that one gets from family name fame prestige and all these things one will be able to succeed now looking at this particular horoscope the lagna lord and the 10th house lord is mercury which is further debilitated in the d4 chart and what i told you about debilitation that luck will be there but it will come at the end part of life only so maximum part of life the young age and the advanced age basically what you call the advanced age up to the age of you say 50 55 the luck is not supporting and post the age of 55 as the person goes to his old age the luck will support him right this is very clear this is strictly going by the word that parasha tells you turiyamshe bhag chintanam from d4 about luck about fortune one have to see and fortune as i have explained you earlier also because i am going to cut that particular part as i have explained you earlier also luck is you have finished your studies and just after finishing the studies you get hired into a job and that is a good job that's luck you have completed your education you are qualified but you are not getting a job that is bad luck normally it is that you have completed your education you have to wait for some time improve your skills communication skills presenting skills etc taking two three extra years and then you get a job this is a normal condition right so whether you are lucky unlucky or it is a normal case that is to be seen through d4 and this is very beautifully seen as well 
right so this is the prime thing for which you will be using d4 along with that first thing that i told you in the starting of right can i ask a question yeah um if, if d4 shows luck fortune spirituality wouldn't you would you also look at the condition of jupiter as the karaka for those things in the d4 or would does that not matter oh, that does not like if jupiter is debilitated in the d4 that does not matter like, i will i will rather say that if jupiter is debilitated then these things are not natural to the native not natural as per the you know as per the what is as per the condition that he gets from family the starting conditions of life are not very conducive to these things but later on he will achieve significators generally indicate things that you have by birth by the societal conditions and family conditions and all these learnings that you get from family and society house lots basically indicate what you get after you have developed your own intelligence so if jupiter is bad in d4 i will rather say that spirituality is not present by birth one is not born into a spiritual family but still if other spirituality combinations are there despite a debilitated jupiter i will say later on in life as the person develops his own intellect and thought he will be spiritual. so we'll go this लॉर्डन then even if the other houses are getting directional strength the luck is not much you know very compromised luck is there very little bit of result very meager so the first of all the ninth lot tenth lot and lagna lot should indicate that the person is lucky for the substantial result to come so that we can see the person we can say that he have been very fortunate in life sir for that to happen these three basic things notes to be discussed okay after that there is one thing that is important that is d45 okay i will come to d4 d4 is a very extensive topic d45 is simpler one so i will go to d45 first d45 is known as aksh khavedamsha aksh khavedamsha is d45 and parashar tells you 